This is part three of the Psychoacoustic series. Check the full playlist here. To recap, check the description for corrections and an index to the video. Headphones are necessary for many of these illusions. And be ready to turn the volume down. Tone deafness and beat deafness. Known properly as congenital amusia, being tone deaf means you are sort of the opposite of someone with perfect pitch. Beyond merely describing a person who is not a fan of music, this condition, which affects something like 4% of us, means that a person can't recall melodies, has a harder time detecting differences in pitch, doesn't seem to distinguish between dissonance and consonance in chords, and so forth. It's rare among people that speak tonal languages, fortunately for them. There may even be a genetic contribution to pitch discrimination among cultures that use tonal languages. Beat deafness is the same kind of condition, but regarding rhythm. The octave illusion. Listen to this. Most people hear a tone that bounces from one side to the other as it bounces from low to high in pitch. Maybe you hear a higher tone on the left, then a lower tone on the right, and this cycle repeats indefinitely. If you are a right-handed person, you probably heard the high tone on the right. If you're left-handed, it's more complicated, but handedness plays into this in fascinating ways. Let's step back a second. If we play a note, and then a note an octave above it, and do this rapidly, you can clearly hear the pitch of the note moving up and down in the center of your stereo perception. Now let's move it off to the side. In the other ear, we're going to play the exact same thing, except that when we play both together, they are out of sync. When the tone for one ear goes high, the other goes low, and vice versa. If we slow this way down, you might be able to hear what is going on more clearly. At speed, however, our ear gets fooled. Interestingly, you can change the side that feels like it's the high note just by focusing your attention on hearing it there. Maybe you've seen these types of illusions. This chair is rotating. Some of you will imagine it rotating to the left and some to the right. If we temporarily show some natural shading, your brain has no choice but to see it one way. Without the shading, you are free to see it either way. Watch as the shading indicates the other direction. With practice, you can force your brain to see it rotating either way when the shading cues are absent. The octave illusion is the same. Take a minute to try to hear the higher tone in the left, and then the right side. Pitch perception isn't linear. You probably know that the frequency of a sound correlates to its pitch. If we graph perceived pitch on the vertical axis, and frequency on the horizontal axis, we would thus expect a line like this. As frequency goes up, perceived pitch goes up at the same rate. But this is not the way we hear pitch. Musically, we treat octaves as being equivalent jumps in pitch. An octave represents a doubling of frequency. This A note is 440 hertz. The octave above is at 880 hertz, and so forth. So musical pitch is defined as a base two logarithmic scale. As frequency goes up, Pitch perception goes up as log base 2 of the frequency over the reference frequency. Case closed, right? Well, while this may be the logical way to break up the scale of pitch into musical octaves, when humans are tested for the perceived differences in pitch, a curve like this shows up. This is the Mel scale, and the research is apparently rather old at this point, so it's not clear how true this is, but the implication is that higher octaves as we traditionally know them cover a greater range in perceived pitch than lower octaves. This makes some intuitive sense. If I play two notes an octave apart, way down in the bass, they don't really sound that far apart. If I repeat this way up high, they do seem, in some sense, farther from each other. Remember, we're talking about distance in a pure pitch sense, not in a musical sense. Maybe this is confirmation bias in action, but it seems true to me. Before you bother asking why we don't adopt the Mel scale as a superior system for creating octaves in our musical structure, watch my video on the origins of the 12-tone system. Glissando illusion. Diana Deutsch is at it again with yet another illusion. For this illusion, you will want to take off your headphones and use loudspeakers of some kind. Also, don't turn it up and just listen to it at a soft volume. Some reverberance in the room can also help. Listen to this. There is a steady drone, as well as a rapidly sliding tone, also known as a glissando. 
Consider for a moment the apparent path of the sliding tone through perceptual space. In reality, the steady tone is bouncing back and forth between the left and right sides. And the sliding tone is doing the same, but on the opposite side to the steady tone. Most listeners hear the steady tone correctly. It seems to bounce instantaneously from side to side. But for the sliding tone, instead of sounding as if it is bouncing back and forth, it sounds like it is smoothly gliding around in space. What's more, the perceived path of the sliding tone is affected by the handedness of the listener. If they are right-handed, they very often hear the sliding tone at high elevation and to the right when it goes high in pitch, and at low elevation and to the left when it goes low in pitch. The details are a little more complicated for non-right-handers. You can check the paper down in the boop de if you'd like to learn more. Cambiata illusion. Another Deutsch illusion. Go ahead and put those headphones back on for this illusion, and don't turn up the volume on this one either. Again, listen and decide where the high or low tones are, or any other patterns you notice. Again, this is actually a collage of tones panned to either ear. And again, your handedness will affect what you hear. Deutsch recommends listening as the tones are pushed all the way to one side, then the other, and then back. Deutsch scale illusion, or the chromatic illusion. The Deutsch scale illusion aims to demonstrate that when a series of tones is presented, our ears most care about the pitch relationship between the tones, followed by other factors, like timing and stereo location. The classic demonstration is to take two runs of notes that don't make any giant pitch jumps, one generally higher than the other, and divide the notes up between the left and right channels. Listen to this demonstration a couple of times. You probably heard one melody like this, and one melody like this. In reality, this is what one side of the audio contained, and this is what the other side contained. Played at the same time, it sounds like this. The ear is obviously paying a lot of attention to the pitch relationships between the tones and piecing together a sort of acoustic narrative of where those tones are going in the scale. As with other Deutsch illusions, this one also demonstrates different effects depending on the handedness of listeners. Right-handers sometimes hear things differently than left-handers, such as one of the melodies being primarily on one side or the other. There is a related illusion where an ascending chromatic run that spans two octaves is split across the left and right ears. Then, a descending chromatic run that spans the same two octaves is split across both ears. The two runs are played together, alternating sides. Instead of hearing runs that cross each other and continue, most listeners will hear runs that approach each other and then change direction, only spanning one octave each. The beginning of the final movement of Tchaikovsky's Sixth Symphony, the Pathétique, uses something like this trick. One violin plays this, and the other violin plays this. Together it sounds like this. Perfect pitch. As you probably know, the term perfect pitch, or absolute pitch, refers to a person's ability to remember particular pitches accurately. They can either reproduce music in its actual key, or identify or produce named pitches with ease. There's research to suggest that perfect pitch is very difficult, if not impossible, to learn once a person grows up. But if a person is exposed to varied and challenging musical stimulation while very young, they stand a decent chance of developing it. Cocktail party effect. 
Discriminating a particular voice from a crowd of voices is something our auditory processing is pretty good at. Listen to this collection of voices and see if you can hear the voice describing a sunset. Now listen again. We'll start with the sunset describing voice and then fade the others in. Try to keep listening to the sunset description. The sunset was beautiful. Blue, purple, yellow, orange, over the sea. There is a red The final mix just then was equivalent to the first mix you heard. Most people have a much easier time hearing what they want once they are keyed in to a particular voice. Illusory continuity and discontinuity. Listen to this continuous sound. When those bursts of noise happened, did the tone seem to stop for the duration of the noise? A 2011 study indicated that roughly one in four young adults will mistakenly perceive the tone as having been broken up. This is known as illusory discontinuity. There seem to be detectable neurological differences in the brains of people that hear the tone as broken. If you heard that tone correctly, don't get too smug. The complementary illusion is known as illusory continuity. The tone rises, holds steady, and then falls. Here's the actual tone that was underneath. For most people, the tone is mistakenly perceived as continuing smoothly. These people are the ones that correctly perceive the tone as continuous in the previous illusory discontinuity example, presumably for the same neurological reasons. It's interesting to contemplate the implications of this, if any. If roughly one quarter of us have this difference in perception, does it change which music we prefer, or which audio compression sounds good, or how likely we are to choose which instrument to play? Thanks for watching. Part 4 will be coming out pretty soon, so stay tuned. A big thanks to my Patreon patrons that are helping to keep this channel going. You'd of course be more than welcome to join them. There's a link down below. If you'd like to make a one-time donation to help support the channel, there's also a link for that. And head over to my second channel if you'd like to see a variety of different sorts of videos over there.